This movie describes how to use the special effects geometric functions activities. These are two of the geometric functions activities in which students create, manipulate, and experience function concepts by treating geometric transformations as functions with points as their variables. In these two activities, students apply a swirling function to a picture and then animate through members of the function family to produce a dramatic special effect. The activities finish by challenging students to create special effects of their own. In the first activity, students begin with the rotation function, modify it by making the angle of rotation depend on the distance from the center, and investigate the characteristics of this new swirling function. In the second activity, students apply the swirling function to an entire picture, and then animate the function itself by changing the level of swirling. The resulting animation of the swirled picture is a striking effect. In the process, students deepen their understanding of functions by applying a function not just to a single variable, but to an entire region of the plane. And by treating the function as an object in its own right as something they can modify and animate in sophisticated ways. Students begin the activities with an empty screen, but to save time I've constructed some of the objects I'll need later. I rotate independent variable x about center point C, my angle parameter theta, give it its own color, and name it swirl because of what I'll be doing with it in a moment. It's the swirl about point C, my angle theta of independent variable x. So this is a nice rotation by 45 degrees, but my next step is going to be to edit theta to use the distance between c and x to control the amount of rotation. So we'll edit the parameter, and instead of 45 degrees, we'll use the distance between c and x. I'll divide it by 1 centimeter and multiply by 15 degrees. So we're rotating by 15 degrees for every one centimeter of distance between C and X. So now our rotation is up to 81 degrees because we're 5.43 centimeters away. If I'm closer, it's less of a rotation farther. It's more of a rotation. I can get a better picture of how this new function behaves by constructing a ray from point C, restricting my independent variable to the ray, and constructing the locus of the dependent variable to see the range that corresponds to this domain. I can even use the plus and minus keys on my keyboard to change the constant k, making it greater for more swirl or less for less or even negative swirl. For the second activity, I want to start without a restricted domain. So I undo to the appropriate point in my construction, then I select the two variables, and from the transform menu I choose define custom transform, which is the sketchpad command to define a function from two related points. I name this function swirl about c by theta, and now that I've defined swirl as a sketchpad function, I can apply that function to other sketchpad objects, such as this ray. So applying swirl to the ray, I get the swirled ray. I can, if I like, create a circle and apply the transformation to my circle and get a really unusual shape. That's going to be worth some investigation to see how the circle corresponds to the shape of its range. By defining a function in this way, I've gained the power to apply a function to an entire set of points in a very convenient way. A picture is just a set of colored points. So I'll get rid of my circle, get rid of my ray, and apply the function to this picture. So I copy the picture, paste it onto point C, and swirl it, and I get to see 
what the swirl looks like for different values of k. Finally, I'll change the swirling picture to a highway scene. and animate the value of k, so I get to see my highway scene being swirled as the value of k is animated. This concludes the movie about the swirling activities.